you know. So I'm sitting here thinking about how I'm thinking about the movie Rosewood, and I'm thinking about how it was one of those movies where you know there was so much commentary on it, but at the same time, from the perspective of like putting yourself in the position of the main characters, it was like oh. Only through personal experience, because I, I saw the movie before my life began to mimic the movie. That's why they say, you know what I'm saying, life imitates art or art imitates life. But I realized that uh, a lot of what I thought was like behind in the past, that stuff is recurring. Yo, it still goes on now. It all depends on your socioeconomic, you know what I'm saying, status and where you stand to be shielded from it. It reminds me of when the, in the Bible where it says, um, it says, <laughs> I make a joke about it too. The devil came to the assembly of the Lord God and his angels. And the Lord God asked the devil, he said, where you been? He said, to and fro, to and fro. Like he was, he was, he was, he was doing his fro. He was picking his afro out, like saying it. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been around doing, you know what I'm saying? This and that. And with that being said, I come to the conclusion also that when he said, consider my own servant Job, he said, put a, um, he said, he said, he said, <laughs> he said, consider my servant Job in the sense that he will never, you know what I'm saying, turn against me or betray me. And I think um, the devil said, because you put a hedge around him and a fence around him. He said, if you take that hedge or fence, you know what I'm saying, away from him, he was like, he'll betray you and he'll basically blaspheme your name or whatever, you know what I'm saying? He'll, he'll, he'll do whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then um, I think it was um, to the extent where he did that and it was like Job had his mind on the right way but his wife was the one that distracted him she was like why don't you just curse God and die and he was like I'm not gonna do that you know what I'm saying but it was almost like to me I think about like the same thing with the um the spousal situation with like in Rosewood you know what I'm saying sometimes your spouse can be your worst enemy in the sense that if you're not equally yoked then your spouse can be the main one to bring you down you know and like it said too, it said the gods were envious because the first man, you know what I'm saying, him and his him and his him, him and his other half like together. He didn't need anything outside of himself. It said it said that, you know what I'm saying, they calculated all the time. Like there was never a time when they were not having sex. But the gods had to actually like, you know, meet up with the goddesses and be like, Well, where are you? You know, where are you? You know what I'm saying? Where have you been? Where are you gonna be at? You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of jealousy ensued, you know? So I'm under the I'm, I'm under the um, suspicion. Damn, I'm under the suspicion. This is bullshit. I'm under the suspicion <laughs> that um there were two um types of beings or two classifications of beings that you know people wrongfully lump into one category as being God, in the sense that in the garden he was like, oh, he said he said Adam, he said, where are you? And that was to say that, you know, you're not with me. If you were with me, then you'd have been okay. Almost reminiscent of Anakin where he was like, it's my fault. He was like, if I'd have kept you with me and didn't let you roam around with Palpatine, then you wouldn't have got corrupted, you know? So to me, it's almost like the same mentality that I have where it's like, I be wanting everybody to be up under me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like overprotective. I'm like ultimately overprotective. It's okay. I'm like super overprotective. And because of that, I don't give people a chance to grow. Maturity occurs outside of your fence, like with the story of Job. So with me thinking about that, I realized that the true strength to be attained in the growth of children and people too, is to be outside of your comfort zone, which is why people come to universities like this. You know what I'm saying? Even though it smells like weed out here, it smell like straight weed out here, you know what I mean? And that's the shit that be getting me, because I'm like, yo, this is higher learning, but I'd rather just learn. I'd rather be sober when I'm learning. I don't want to be high, you know? It says uh, tobacco free. So that means you can get free tobacco over here. You can get free tobacco on campus. You ain't got to have no cigarettes. It's, free. it's tobacco free. I mean, you can get free tobacco. Like, yo, <laughs> if you ain't got no tobacco, you can get it's tobacco free. Like, yo, how much you got tobacco? This shit, this, this shit free as hell. This shit tobacco free. I'm about to fall across the street. You know what I'm saying? And it's smoke over here. 
Everywhere you go, somebody's smoking and shit. This shit is like fucking poison. It's almost depressive too. Because I feel like, you know, when you smoke, I mean, you can't cope with reality. I can't knock it, but me personally, I pride myself on not smoking, dealing with reality head on. You know what I'm saying? Without having to oxygen asphyxiate myself. That's some freaky ass shit. That's like, it's like somebody choking you out before you bust a nut. But I'm about to choke your ass out and I'm like, you have an orgasm. It's a freaky ass shit having a cigarette. And it's oral fixation. Like oral sex, like saying that you want something in your mouth all the time. Just saying. Peace, peace.